You're listening to the AfterBuzz TV Network. Now the largest new media platform on the web and your number one source for after-show entertainment. Very good, Gene. Johnson. After Buzz TV. From Los Angeles, California, and Maria Menounos, and streaming live thanks to Akamai Technologies, this is AfterBuzz TV Spotlight On. Spotlight On is a long-form interview series featuring actors and TV personalities. And now, from the world's number one TV after-show platform, this is AfterBuzz TV Spotlight On. Well, welcome everybody to another episode of Spotlight On here at AfterBuzz TV. I am your host, Erica Vieira, and with over 30 million weekly downloads, we are your number one source for after show entertainment. And I am thrilled to announce our special guest for this segment of Spotlight On, the beautiful and talented world-renowned gymnast, Nastia Lukin. Hi, thanks Hi, for Nastia. having me. <laughs> well, we're so glad to have you here. Well, just to give a little bit of background on Nastia, Nastia, Ms. Nastia Lukin was born in Russia, but was raised here in the United States, specifically in Texas, where she trained gymnastics at her father's gym, who is also a world-renowned uh, gymnast as well. In 2008, she was named the Olympic individual all-around champion and is a five-time Olympic medalist. Most recently, she's been a sports commentator for NBC, where she traveled to Sochi for the Winter Olympics. Nasia is also a stu student currently at NYU and is focused on brand positioning centered on promoting healthy living for young women. Well, Nastia, I've given our listeners just a little bit of an overview, but take a minute, tell us more about you personally to get to know you a little bit better and a couple of your highlights of your journey so far. Sure. Well, like you said, I was born in Moscow and both of my parents were actually gymnasts. So kind of being born with gymnastics in my blood was how I got started and developed that passion at such an early age. And, you know, I never really had as a young child and a young gymnast, I didn't have those Olympic aspirations until probably I was like 10 or 12 when I realized what the Olympics really were and my dad won four Olympic medals and just seeing those in the house as another decoration or accessory mm -hmm. didn't I didn't really understand what it was and then I think at the age that I did I was like okay wait I want some of those of my own so that's kind of how I got started in gymnastics and my dad was my coach uh, my whole career and my mom was actually my first coach but she was too much of a mom and couldn't <laughs> handle that so she's like I'm gonna pass that over to your dad yeah and um yeah so you know went to the Olympics in 2008 and that was obviously a lifelong dream of mine and to achieve um, my accomplishments at the Olympic Games with my dad right by my side and kind of guiding me on throughout my whole career was more than a dream come true. And to be able to not only win the all-around gold medal, but five medals at that Olympic Games was um, just like I, going into it I, I had no expectations yeah. for that you know it's like you go into an Olympic Games and you're already just so honored and thrilled to be representing your country at the Olympic Games and yeah, just to be there uh, just huge. to be there yeah. is, is amazing and then winning that silver medal with our team that first night kind of just set the bar really high and then after that we were all just wanting so badly when you're I always say like second place and fourth place are kind of those where you're like second place you're so close to the gold and yeah. then fourth place you're so close to getting a medal so um, after the team competition, it was like right before the all around finals, I was like so motivated and so determined to, to get that gold medal. And so to be able to get that and, uh, and, you know, walk away from my Olympic games with five medals was incredible. And then, yeah, now, like you said, I am commentating for NBC and yeah. have really stayed involved in what I'm so passionate about, which is gymnastics. And it has given me so many opportunities in my life. And so I hope to continue to be involved in it. Um, at many different levels and areas, which commentating is one. I also have my own competition in my own competition series called the Nasty Lucan Cup Series and the Nasty Lucan Cup, which wow. this year there's going to be about um, 23 different invitationals. So the top two girls at each of those are going to make it onto the Nasty Lucan Cup. And uh, this time it's going to be at Cowboys Stadium in Dallas. Oh, so cool. being from Dallas, um, it's going to be incredible to be able to walk in there and see like signage and you know everything yeah. and uh, so yeah that's always a really fun competition for the girls and for me as well and at NYU so kind of doing a bunch of different things mm -hmm. and uh, just Keep enjoying yeah definitely yeah. <laughs> that's awesome and I always feel like during you know each Olympics whether it's a winter or summer Olympics there's always like a set of I like to think of like Olympic celebrities or superstars mm -hmm. and you definitely were that <laughs> when you were in the Olympics and you were definitely one of the darlings. How was it 
at that point going from you know, someone obviously who you're, you're so passionate about mm-hmm. gymnastics and that was your whole life to being thrown in the public sphere well because for me gymnastics was just something I had a passion for Mm -hmm. I never had the expectations of being any kind of public figure um, of any sort you know it was just like I wanted to go to the Olympics because that's what my goal was and my dream was and like I said I wanted to be just like my parents when I grew up and Mm -hmm. so I never had the the thought or the idea that that would kind of change my life and give give me so many amazing opportunities and experiences and meet some of the most incredible people and and travel the world and the country and and just um, really, it, it did change my life quite a bit. Um, but you know, it was it was it was interesting because it was like I, you like don't sign up for that. You know, it's yeah. just like you train it's seven hours a day, yeah, seven hours a day, six days a week, and you're so used to that lifestyle. And mm-hmm. so then all of a sudden, you are kind of getting thrown into a whole different world. And um, you know, it's it's been um, really fun, but at the same time, for me. I always remember like going back into the gym and I was just like, okay, like this is my comfort zone. This is where I feel most comfortable. And, um, but you know, having retired from, um, my competitive career about two years ago has, you know, opened up more doors and getting into commentating Mm -hmm. and, and all sorts of different things has been something that I've really enjoyed doing. That's awesome. Yeah. Because you were out there and so (laughs) many interviews and definitely a public figure out there. In addition to, doing that uh, like you said gymnastics that was your passion you've been Mm -hmm. doing it your whole life and one of the traits of an olympic athlete is knowing how to deal with incredible amounts of pressure Mm -hmm. how were you able to deal with that kind of pressure pretty much your entire life but especially when you're at the olympics well, I think it definitely comes with experience. So mm-hmm. like starting out at my first world championships, I definitely wasn't used to that kind of pressure. But at the same time, you know, you compete at national championships and other international competitions that kind of prepare you for something as big as a world championships and then later in Olympic Games. But the pressure is always there. The nerves are always there. Like that's not something that you can just make go away. And uh, but I also think that adrenaline rush is kind of like what we all live for as performers and as athletes and as competitors. And I think it's just about how you deal with that pressure and that Mm -hmm. expectation. And it's really mental. You know, it's like when you're at the Olympic Games, everybody is physically prepared. Everybody is, you know, pretty much on that same level of of excellence, really. Because if you're there, you're you're cream of the crop, the Mm -hmm. best of the best. Especially, you know, for us being, I always say, like, the hardest part in the United States is making that Olympic team Mm -hmm. because, you know, we could send two teams and and be very competitive with um, a lot of the other countries. And so it's like once you're on that team, you kind of want to take like a deep breath and be yeah. like, okay. But then obviously now it's like even harder work if you want to achieve um, greater things. And so um, just mentally trying to stay focused and trying not to like look around into the arena and think how many millions of people are watching back at home. And yeah. I think it was, for me, I'm like such a visual person, so I would always do a lot of visualization and and just really um, think about my routines in my head and, and again, not look around and not think, oh my gosh, I'm at the Olympic Games. You know, I'd always try to treat every competition the same, whether it was the Olympic Games or a little invitational competition or world championships and national championships. And I think that's what really helps is, obviously, it's a little bit hard when you see, like, signage of the Olympic rings everywhere, whether it's, you're in the bathroom and it's like, (laughs) you know you're at the Olympics and... So it was it was a little bit hard and and for all of us it was our first Olympics and we didn't know what to expect but we were all in it together. So mm-hmm. I think having teammates and friends that are supporting you and and kind of right there by your side really helped. Are you still friends with some of those girls? Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Um I saw one of my teammates out actually yesterday. She lives out here. Um and you know, it's it's hard because we all live in different parts of yeah. the country now. So and we all kind of have different lives now because mm-hmm. nobody is competing on the Olympic level anymore. But it's really nice when we're able to get together and um last summer we were inducted into the Gymnastics Hall of Fame. So we were all together and we were all just catching up on life and um what everyone's up to and mm-hmm. and it's it's great text messaging and social media you know you are able to kind of keep keep up with each other but I think having um this bond that you know competing at the Olympics has created this special bond that Mm -hmm. will be with us for the rest of our lives and you know this these six girls that we were out there in Beijing and in representing our country and doing something that we had been working years and basically our entire lives to achieve this goal and when you're able to do it with five of um of your teammates and and some of your closest friends it's it's really incredible yeah that's really it's really such a unique experience yeah and only a few people 
can't experience that. <laughs> yeah. So it's like did, it's surreal. Were like, you like it's... texting them when you're when you watch like other Olympic games or anything? Like, oh yeah, remember this? Or is it? Are you beyond that? Um, no. I mean, every Olympics, yeah. it's like it brings back the feelings, the memories, everything. I would think and so. um, like the song, the dun dun dun. dun yes, yeah, totally. Hear, you're like, ah. The Olympic theme, <laughs> yeah. even the national anthem. Yeah. You know, it's like obviously it. It, it has a special meaning to every um, mm-hmm. American, but yeah. I think after hearing it that one night in Beijing, now it's got a whole different meaning. And it's like every time I hear it, like for for a split second, I automatically go back to standing on that podium and, and watching the flag being raised mm-hmm. and listening to the national anthem. And no matter where I am, whether it's, you know, a sporting event yeah. or um, a- anywhere you are, it's like there's these certain memories. Now, I don't necessarily think about the Olympics every single day yeah. because it's like my life is, so, yeah. yeah. And not not that I've moved on because I will forever be proud of these accomplishments, but I think it also is important to move on in, in a sense where you're not like holding on to something that you've done five years ago. And yeah. um, it will forever be part of me. And um, But it also doesn't define me as a person. You know, mm-hmm. it's like I feel like um, a lot of people maybe – try to let an accomplishment or an achievement or something that they've done define them as a person. Yeah. And um, while I'll forever be proud of that accomplishment, I also feel like, you know, we are also humans as yeah. everybody else is and, and being able to kind of move on. And, um, you know, I my whole gymnastics career in life was in Dallas and I moved to New York and started school at NYU. And so having kind of like this second part of my life and starting mm-hmm. um, something new has been it was scary you know it was kind of like moving into the unknown a little bit but also that's why it's important to set goals and and do something that um is outside of your comfort zone because for me my comfort zone was just gymnastics Mm -hmm. and uh it's been it's been a great experience so far I think it's got to be really hard though I always think about that for for athletes or people like yourself you know and Olympiads Mm -hmm. that you do something every single day of your life for hours I'm sure you practice every day for what five six hours every day seven hours a day seven hours a day yeah and then you do that you do that and then you're there you win the medals I mean luckily you know for you you win it not everyone does and then you're done and you don't do it anymore yeah how is that transition? Sounds like you've done well with that transition. You've got your your um, competition yeah. that you're doing, your corresponding. But how is that like at the core to be like, you know, I'm not going to be in the gym anymore. I'm not doing that anymore. There's like mixed feelings. Like one of the feelings is like, oh, I can breathe. I don't have to be in the gym yeah. for seven hours a day anymore. And you can work out, you know, and um, obviously I'm, I'm health and fitness is, is something that's going to be important to me for the rest of my life. But having a little bit more free time and, you know, spending time with friends and obviously still have a lot going on in, in work and in traveling a lot. But at mm-hmm. the same time, you know, waking up every morning and, and not thinking like, all right, what do I have to do in the gym today? How many routines and, and yeah. so on. So um, that part of it is kind of like a little bit of a relief but at the same time because that's all I've known for so many years of my life it is scary you know it's scary going into the unknown and thinking I'm also like such a person of structure and so I think by you have to be yeah yeah you definitely do yeah you have to have that structure but I think by moving to New York and starting school right away and taking 18 credits every semester has given me like (laughs) that structure I need in this transitional phase of my life and obviously you know when I graduate school in a year and a half to two years I'll be like a little bit more able to take on um not something that's you know because gymnastics was such a huge part of my life and that training for Mm -hmm. so long and being able to transition into something else being in school has been really great because it's given me that that structure that structure to yeah. life yeah and almost like I don't want to say like it's not like a distraction but it's keeping you busy in a way yeah I mean it definitely is and obviously yeah. that's not exactly why I'm in school just to yeah, keep me obviously. busy um and education has been something that's been really important to uh, me and my family and, yeah, and school good. always came first um but even before gymnastics I didn't obviously wasn't in the in school as much as I was in gym but yeah. went to school every day and classes were half an hour each five classes and you know, it was, it was, um, always very condensed, Mm -hmm. but at the same time it was, um, you know, I couldn't have gone to public school because of the hours. And, um, so getting an education and and graduating, getting a degree has been on my bucket list. And I knew it was just a matter of time. And, you know, when things kind of slow down a little bit with training and, and I'm also the kind of person that when it's something 
that to that extent in that great like something like training for an Olympic Games that was my focus and now it's like this it's like being in school full-time and being a student and getting that degree is something that I'm really like focused on right now and and obviously doing a lot of other little things or bigger things around it but school is my kind of main priority and I make my work schedule around all my classes and and that's nice because like you said, I mean, seven, six days a week, seven hours a day, growing up when you're in junior high and high school, <laughs> yeah. you didn't probably get to experience that normal high school I didn't life. have a normal high school life, but I mean, I went to my senior prom yeah. and, uh, you know, it was just, I was in, I, I was in bed by 10 o'clock that yeah. night because I had training at 8 a.m. the next morning. So, um, but yeah, it wasn't, it, a it wasn't a now. normal high school experience, yeah. but at the same time, I don't feel like I missed out on anything um you know I don't wish I could have traded my life or the things that I did for a normal high school experience and I always remember like thinking I will have the rest of my life to go out with friends and and to hang out with them and and at the same time I started I was able to see the world and travel the country and represent my country starting at 12 years old you know it's like who can do that at 12 years old so the experiences that I made at such an early age definitely topped having a normal middle school high school experience I think that's awesome I think that's such a good attitude because I think sometimes when you're in it you can lose sight of the fact of what an amazing experience yeah. it is. And, you know, sometimes you hear people like, you know, sometimes I wish I could just be normal. And you're like, yeah. well, you have such a great life. <laughs> yeah. I'm glad that you you don't regret it and you're happy with it and, yeah. and you experience things. But I don't know. Do. I don't think, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think no life is really normal. Yeah. You know, it's like everybody has their own idea of normal. Mm-hmm. And for me, that that was normal. Training that seven hours a day, six days a week, that was my normal. Yeah. And and now moving on and, and going to school and doing, you know, different appearances and speaking engagements and commentating and um, being a full-time student, like mm-hmm. that's still normal to me. You know, yeah. for somebody else that might not be normal. What you do isn't normal to me because yeah. that's what you're used to and not yeah. me. But so I, I don't know. I feel like it's, it's, it's been normal to me and it's something obviously that I enjoy enjoy doing because I think that's the most important thing Mm -hmm. is whether it's a job or school or um, a sport or whatever it is that you're doing you have to enjoy it and have a passion or else it's gonna feel like work and it's gonna feel like you're just on this daily grind of like you're just going through the motions yeah you can never excel at the level that you did if you weren't truly passionate about it oh absolutely and nobody can make you do it you know it's like I see that so many times in whether it's gymnastics or another sport and the parents end up wanting it sometimes more than the actual child and and I'm so thankful and fortunate that my parents were never that way because they also had been through it to the top of their level and they said we will guide you and help you and do whatever it takes to um, help you achieve your dreams but we'll never force you or push you into it like you have to want it more than we do yeah. And so I think that was important too. And as I've gotten older, obviously, and looking like forward to one day when I have kids in my own family and, um, you know, using that same thing because it's like it, it makes sense. You know, it's mm-hmm. like I see so many parents that are just like saying, you know, my, my, my daughter – that's five years old is going to the 20 whatever Olympic games and you're like oh my god you don't even know if she likes gymnastics or you know what she's going to be doing in a few years so that kind of pressure is um it's kind of it's difficult but for me I never had that I was so lucky that I had supportive parents that uh, at the end of the day I remember my mom was always like I don't care how you do at this competition she was like I just want you to you know end that day and be safe and be yeah. happy and healthy and that was like her her priority in the same thing it was you know they were like well no matter what happens we'll we'll mm-hmm. love you just the same if you win the Olympics or if you get last place and so I think that was like a really healthy environment for me to be able to grow up in and, and train in and yeah <laughs> yeah I mean that that's awesome I mean you had so many amazing experiences mm-hmm. Um, take me back a little bit not too long ago when you were at the Winter Olympics. Mm-hmm. How was that? So you were a correspondent for NBC mm-hmm. and you being Russian, did that have anything to do with them wanting to bring you back to Russia and you know be there as like a Russian maybe expert or something? <laughs> I mean definitely it helped a little <laughs> bit because I am fluent in Russian so yeah. that helped but um, I, I've been doing things with NBC probably since the 2012 Olympic okay. Games in London so um, you know it was kind of like a natural transition but yeah it definitely I think um, helped everybody because even like when we were at restaurants and stuff and I was with my producer and our, our film crew and the menu was just in Russian yeah. so they're like alright you're ordering for everybody whatever you think is good and so it, it helped 
helped. And um, and it was great for me, too, because I was born in Moscow, but I'd never been to Sochi. I've never really traveled around Russia. Mm -hmm. I moved to the United States when I was two and a half. So yeah. I got to experience, you know, the country that I, I was born in. And, and it's very different from Moscow, but also – at an Olympic Games and yeah. like two things that I'm obviously very passionate about and and learning more about Russia too and, and exploring and being a tourist but then also being a fan of the Olympics but then also working for NBC so mm -hmm. there was just so many great um, aspects of being able to do that and, and that's something that I really want to do with the rest of my life and my career is, is do more correspondence okay. work and that's what I was going to ask you so is this something that you see yourself doing a lot more of in the future yeah I okay. would love to yeah I really enjoy doing it it was my first time mm -hmm. doing it and um when I'm commentating for gymnastics it's obviously a little bit more serious yeah. and um a little bit more structured but doing this I um you know had had really great people and and I've had such amazing mentors that I've been able to look up to and, and get experience share experiences and, and they give me advice and in this whole new world because mm -hmm. obviously I don't really know too much about it quite yet Yet I'm still learning a Did lot of things. Did they train you prior to doing that? Did you go through like a boot camp or something? No. no? You're just kind of like, yeah. show the camera and a microphone in your face and go. Yeah, <laughs> but I think that's what made it more exciting yeah. and fun because it was like I wasn't trained. I, I didn't train 18 years of my life for that moment at the Olympic yeah. Games. It was just kind of like, all right, let's see what you got. And yeah. so that's what made it more fun for me. Mm -hmm. And I think, uh, you know, I think by – I think we shot 14 segments and probably by like 10 through 14 it was like, like all right it. I get it yeah I get it. I'm like let's do 15 yeah. more now um but it was such a great experience yeah. and again it's like all these people that I was able and fortunate fortunate enough to work with while I was there and um you know they've been such an amazing help as I'm trying to you know get into mm -hmm. kind of another career basically yeah so that is is that kind of what you're studying for at NYU? Um, I'm bit? majoring in sports management. Okay. So, yeah, I mean, along the same lines, yeah. you know, it's I, I don't necessarily want to be an agent, but I really wanted to learn more of the business aspect to sports because it's been a huge part of my life. And um, with commentating, that's something that I really enjoy doing. Mm -hmm. And um, But getting more into correspondence work and being able to be more of myself and show my personality yeah. more than when I'm just, um, you know, on a mic talking about what's happening on the competition floor, which I really enjoy doing, mm -hmm. but I would love to be able to do a little bit more so what about other you've done other things too like you were you had a few acting gigs <laughs> you're on gossip girl a couple of different shows is, is acting something that you want to do you know I don't aspire to be no. the next Meryl <laughs> Streep like I I think for me she is obviously a legend in in her field in her industry yeah. and she has worked so many years to get to that level the same way that we work so many years to get to the level and um, that we are in our sports and mm -hmm. so I I think it you know a lot of people kind of want to once they accomplish something in one field they just want to go to the next field and be like I want to be an expert yeah, yeah exactly whether it's singing or acting and mm -hmm. you know I really enjoy doing these um when I was on Gossip Girl and um, Stick It and Make It or Break It, I did a mm -hmm. few things here and there. But, um, you know, I have a lot of friends in the industry too and I see how hard they work and, um, you know, the auditions that they have to constantly go to and the scripts that they're reading and everything. And it's, it's they basically train the same amount that, you know, and spend the same amount yeah. of time that I did in gymnastics. So mm -hmm. while if an opportunity comes out, comes up and um, it makes sense and, you know, it doesn't require 15 years of experience and um, I would love to do that. But mm -hmm. at the same time, that's not something that I I'm actively pursuing and you know not actively going out on auditions and um not taking like acting classes yeah. or anything yeah. but it's been fun and what made you do it when you did the gossip girl stuff did you think that's something you wanted to no, do? I, no i um approach? yeah gossip girl was my favorite tv show yeah. and I like at the time too. yeah <laughs> and i it was a few it was like a week after the olympics mm -hmm. i was out here in la and sitting at dinner with a bunch of my friends kind of celebrating and the producers of the show happened to be sitting next to the table next to me oh, and wow. they sent over a napkin um with the waiter and they said congratulations on the gold keep watching gossip girl xoxo oh. <laughs> and i was like oh my god this is so cool and then the next day they had called my agent and asked if i wanted to just do a guest role and oh, cool. um so yeah i flew out to new york like shortly after and 
Um, it was so much fun though. Yeah. It was like, I think I had like one or two lines and, but it was just the experience, yeah. you know, it's not acting because I don't necessarily say I did any acting. Yeah. I read one line and, uh, <laughs> but it was fun. It was fun getting to know the cast and, um, go through hair and makeup with them. Yeah. And it was, it's all about the experience. So yeah, I don't ever consider myself as being any kind of seasoned yeah. actress or anything, yeah. but, um, it's been a fun, fun experience. experience and, I was. I also did a little thing on the show Hellcats that was on the CW, and one of my best friends, Ali Mashaka, was one of the leads on that show. Mm-hmm. And it was so funny because when I got the opportunity to do that, they were like, "We know you're friends with Ali, but you can't tell her that. Like, you're on. It's like a surprise." And I was uh. like, "How do I not tell her that I'm like coming out to Vancouver to like be on her show?" Yeah. And and then she found out about it, and so she like called me. She's like, "Oh my god, I just heard!" And again, it was the experience. It mm. was like being able to, you know, I stayed a few extra days to hang out with her there and yeah. and, and to spend time on set with her and. Um, again had a few lines and it was like so easy and brief but at being able to kind of go back on that and have those memories and just um have that experience yeah. was fun what about something different like what about going on dancing with the stars sean johnson she was mm-hmm. on dancing with the stars yeah have you ever been asked is that something that you'd want to do um, I've been a huge fan of mm-hmm. the show. I think it's so much fun to watch. And um, obviously gymnastics for me, um, I was more known for like my grace and artistry than I was for like the powerful yeah. um, tumbling type. So um, yeah, I think it's a great show. And um, she did amazing on it. I yeah. remember watching her. Yeah. It was right after the Olympics. Mm-hmm. So um, while I never was able to go out and like watch live because I was back training again um, and competing, I remember watching and she won. So it was like, it was really cool to see her. And and some of my, a lot of my friends from the Olympics have been on it. And Mm -hmm. Meryl Davis just won the season. So it was fun to watch her go from winning the Golden Sochi to that. And um, I don't know, you know, I think right now I'm, um, I I would never want to shut down any opportunity and say I wouldn't do something. Um, Right now I'm obviously focused on school and living in New York, Mm -hmm. but um, who knows? (laughs) Maybe, I don't know. (laughs) We would see if we would, you know, I would think about that if, if that if yeah. I needed to so yeah that's cool you like you said you get so many experiences yeah, and yeah. opportunities yeah from being a an Olympic medalist yeah a champion <laughs> yeah so um one of the other things you mentioned is that you have this uh, almost like a like a competition type mm-hmm. thing do you see yourself kind of breeding the next group of Olymp- the Olympic team mm-hmm. do you see talent coming out of your competition going into absolutely the next Olympics? so two years before the last Olympic Games in London mm-hmm. so I guess it probably was I want to say 2010 um a little girl named Gabby Douglas mm-hmm. competed at the Nasi Lugan Cup and she got fourth place and yeah. two years later went on to win the Olympic gold medal in London so you never know yeah. like who's going to come out of it it may be you know another Gabby Douglas mm-hmm. is going to be competing this year at Cowboy Stadium and we'll see her in Rio yeah or um you know it's or you just um, want to give these – for me, I've just wanted to give these girls the experience of a lifetime and hope that they remember it forever and say, you know, that one year that I qualified to the Nasty Lugan Cup, mm-hmm. competed, and I designed their leotards and warm-ups and, um, oh, you know, cool. really make it special for them. And so that's been um, something really fun for me. And to get to know these girls, there's about 30 of them every year. Okay. And so I try to spend some one-on-one time with them and – you know, without coaches, without parents. So it's just yeah. like, I really want them to open up to me a little bit. And, and it is hard, I think, for them at first because yeah. some of them, you can see like the intimidation in their eyes. And I'm like, I'm like, look, I'm just like you guys. You know, yeah. it's just like, yeah, maybe I just have an accomplishment um, that's that you might not have yet. Mm-hmm. Um, but well, maybe I just won, you know, five <laughs> medals. <laughs> <laughs> but at the same time, it's like I've I've been through everything yeah. that they have. I've been through high school, late. the high school years, and the training, and coaches, parents, um, friendships, relationships, mm-hmm. everything. And so I love being able to spend time with these girls and really get to know them. And um, once they do start, it takes about like fifteen to twenty minutes for them to be like, okay, I have another question. Yeah, you know, yeah, and at yeah. first they're kind of like, so how's it training with your dad or you know it's like something more um generic and Mm -hmm. then they really open up and so I think it's it's great for them to be able to have somebody and that's what I hope um to be for them is to be somebody that they can come to me and and say look you know I have a question with this or I want to get your advice or Mm -hmm. how did you deal with this and um so that's been really great for me too to kind of be um somewhat of a mentor maybe to them yeah that's really really nice and what made you 
I mean, it sounds like you already said you want to give girls like a platform. Yeah. Is that why you can create exactly. this whole yeah. competition? Yeah, you know, there's nothing really out there yeah. in this in the gymnastics world that's like this mm-hmm. because you you it's it's this kind of gray area between um, so in gymnastics it's like the level tens, which is like the step right before elite, which is where you can compete at nationals, make okay. the national team go to the Olympics. And then um, there's nothing really in between that kind of like intertwine whether it's intertwines the two. Yeah. yeah. Um, and so it's kind of like that next stepping stone, mm-hmm. whether they want to go on to elite or they're going on to college on a full ride scholarship to an amazing university and and I always tell them I'm like this is going to be the most exciting four years of your life yeah. enjoy that yeah. and um, so everybody is kind of at a different stage in their careers and their lives but when we all come together for that one weekend um, everybody is and that's kind of why I always when I design leotards, everybody's in the same exact designs. Mm-hmm. Um, the seniors are in the same design. It's it's always black with pink accents, and the juniors are in a pink body with black accents. Mm-hmm. And but it's the same design, and and that's only for TV producers because the first few years it was the same exact leotard, same color, and they're mm-hmm. like, they when there's tell. thirty, yeah, there's thirty girls like, and they have little numbers on their backs, but they're like, can we separate them somehow? Yeah. Can each squad be in different colors? I'm like, nope, pink is the color of the competition. They can't be in different colors. I kind of like came halfway and I was like, mm-hmm. all right, I'll flip, you know, reverse the designs. But um, it, it kind of just gives them the opportunity also to compete on a big stage. Mm-hmm. And I mean, it's it's in the same arena as um, some of their idols or, you know, some of their heroes can compete in the very next day and they get to watch them at um, the at and American Cup, which is a big international competition. Mm-hmm. So they literally compete on the same floor yeah. and the That's same balance experience. beam. And for them, they get to like sit in the stands the next day and they're like, I was just doing that yesterday yeah. you know so uh it's it's a I, I hope that it's a great experience for them and for me it's so much fun and yeah. I get to commentate that event as well and and host it and and kind of just uh be all over the place but it's it's really fun and it's cool that Gabby Douglas was there and yeah that you're able to see her and you know she's a part of that whole thing what do you think and and you're you're still tied to that community which mm-hmm. is great what do you see as the future for gymnastics or for the next Olympic team. Yeah, well, I mean, there's definitely um, a lot of potential coming up towards these next two years. So at the last World Championships in the fall, Simone Biles actually won the all-around World Championships. And Mm -hmm. Kyla Ross, who competed at the 2012 Olympic Games, was part of the Fierce Five that won the gold medal, came in second place. So they did a one-two punch. And, um, you know, they're both training and healthy and ready to go again for the national championships next month and then the world championships again in um in october in china which i'll be traveling to that as well and then you know the the 2016 olympics are going to be here right before we know it again it's literally as soon as a winter olympic is over it's a summer and Mm -hmm. vice versa and um there are a few girls that um are coming up that are first year seniors and um nora flatley is kind of one of mine that i have i've had my eyes on she actually um is coached by gabby's coach Mm -hmm. um and Sean Johnson's coach and mm-hmm. so she um, has such great potential and I think in the next two years is kind of you know grooming up to be um, one to keep our eyes on mm-hmm. and again nobody has really seen her in, in the real world I think everybody in the gymnastics world is, is starting to catch on to who she is and what she her strengths are but mm-hmm. um, there's a few of those girls that yeah. you know nobody really knows quite yet but um, it's in a sense it's, it's only two years away it's going to be here before we know it but at the same time a lot can happen in mm-hmm. two years when you're spending 40 hours a week in the gym and between injuries and different obstacles you have to overcome it's yeah. um yeah it's it's going to be exciting and it's an exciting time for me as well because I'm able to go to every competition and, and commentate and mm-hmm. and kind of um watch them throughout the season and, and kind of see what they're watch them grow yeah exactly that's awesome yeah let's switch gears a little bit kind of more more fun personal <laughs> stuff but are you how's it like dating are you dating anyone are you single do you have a boyfriend I don't have a boyfriend <laughs> <laughs> must that's, be tough to date being Nastia Lucan you know that's it is because for <laughs> me I never want to talk about my gymnastics accomplishments mm. going into anything I always um you know I, if if somebody brings it up I, I'm fine talking about it but mm. I'm never like 
hi, so this is what I did, yeah, you know, but yeah. it's like then, and if they don't know and then if they find out about it, it's just like, it, I feel like it just adds a whole different aspect yeah, to it and then awkward. it gets awkward yeah. and then I'm just like, ah. <laughs> um, <laughs> So typically it's like, um, I've always found it's like, you know, mutual friends that are, it's nice because going into it they know, but it's not like weird and awkward. Yeah. I mean, at times it can be, but it's the same thing with friends and and I've kind of learned along the way that with friendships and you know, it's always those people that were there for you um, when you were 10 years old yeah. that are your true friends and that will be there for the rest of your life. And so, yeah, I mean, it's not easy dating, but it's not like it's easy dating really for like every single person. Yeah. And um, but living in Dallas and, and devoting my life to gymnastics and and training in the Olympic Games was um, that was honestly something that wasn't really on um, my mind yeah. until I was kind of finished with gymnastics and now living in New York and being able to meet so many different people and, and again have so many different experiences and, and travel the country has um, kind of opened up a lot of doors and yeah we'll see I mean I'm just a normal 24 year old girl yeah. <laughs> just like everybody else and it's, it's hard for, for any you know 24 year old girl <laughs> let alone someone like you that's got such huge accomplishments <laughs> yeah I've also just felt like like I said kind of at the beginning of the show I'm like you know gymnastics and the Olympic Games doesn't define me as yeah. a person it is just something that I have accomplished and achieved and yes it has given me opportunities and opened many doors and I'm forever grateful for that but at the same time I hope that you know when people meet me they kind of think a little bit more beyond than just like oh yeah she was that Olympic gymnast mm -hmm. you know it's like you know I feel like you know there's always there's always something more to somebody and you know the same with actors and actresses and musicians yeah. and yes that's that's their day job you know but they're also a human and they're also have a personality and a heart mm -hmm. and um more to just what they do whether they're on screen or you yeah. know in the gym or whatever it is so yeah well I want to ask you something there is a girl out there right now and she's a gymnast Casey Catanzaro yeah and supposedly she was on this show called American Ninja Warrior. Yes, she was the first have... woman to, to master the yeah. obstacle course. And like she's blowing up in social media. I think her hashtag. If anyone Casey. could do it, it would be a gymnast. Yeah. Like, on, And I'm obviously biased because I was a gymnast. But I mean, I think a lot of people underestimate the amount of strength that you have to have to be a gymnast, especially as a girl, because yeah. the guys are so like buff and like their muscles are huge. It's but so for, visible. You yeah, you it. can see it. Yeah. Um, and for girls, you can't really see that and but the amount of strength flexibility stamina everything that you have to have to be a gymnast is absolutely insane and like you are in the best shape of your life mm -hmm. um when when you're competing in gymnastics and so for her I'm not surprised at yeah. all you know I think and also beyond the strength but it's like the coordination did you and, watch the video um yeah I have it's, it's crazy. insane it, yeah, she's it's incredible in yeah. yeah um but again I'm not surprised yeah. you know it's like I feel like and also it's beyond the, the physical things but it's like the mental it's like everything that you have to do to be able to get that in the, the dedication and mm -hmm. the motivation that you have to have in the discipline you know mm -hmm. of like devoting not just I always said it, it's not just the seven hours of training that you spend in the gym but it's also your life outside of it it's going to bed at the right time mm -hmm. it's eating well it's making sure you you know get enough rest and um, do your physical therapies your acupuncture massage like it is literally a whole life structure that yeah. you have to do if you want to be successful in that. So um, I'm not surprised at all. But she is incredible. Like I don't, I couldn't do that. So <laughs> you probably could. No, no, no I don't no? think so. <laughs> I guess never say never. Yeah. But um, yeah, she's amazing. Yeah, maybe when you were back training, you could. Yeah, done it. yeah. I mean. But still, I think that's something that you have to train for. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like she, obviously her gymnastics background has really helped her. But I yeah. know that she has put in so much training on, you know, a course like that. And, you know, those kind of um, training things yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, that we don't really even do in gymnastics. So, Well, you're a super busy girl. You also <laughs> have a clothing line. I did. Yeah, yeah. I did for um, a few couple years. years ago, right? Yeah. And it was really cool. It was um, with Warner Brothers and yeah. JCPenney. It was called Supergirl by Nastia. And um, that was really fun for me because it was something that I'm also passionate about is, is empowering young girls to be able mm -hmm. to believe in themselves and um, set dreams for themselves. And 
and be confident and I yeah. think that just the Supergirl logo in itself to be able to wear that obviously when you um, put that on it adds a little bit to you especially um, for a young girl mm-hmm. that's you know I think little boys have they have those superheroes that yeah. they can choose between like 10 of them but for girls I think especially in in today's world you know it's like you know they look whether they have a favorite actress that they like on a tv show or something but there's not like a superhero that they can like look up to and besides supergirl and so that was uh really cool for me to be able to do that and kind of travel the country and um meet different girls and and kind of teach them that you know dreams do come true and Mm -hmm. um for me I was I was just like one of them at at one point in my life just setting dreams and goals for myself and and it really is about believing yourself in yourself and also you know, not not really thinking about it too much when somebody tells you you can't do something. Because mm-hmm. trust me, so many people told me that I would never win the Olympic Games in the all-around, that I was never an all-around gymnast, that I should only do what I was best at, which was the balance beam and bars. And, mm-hmm. um, you know, I... I didn't really at first it got it got to me a lot because I was like maybe they're right you know but then I was like my dad was like these people don't know you you know Mm -hmm. they're just outsiders looking in and um you know when I finally started realizing that that you Mm -hmm. can't really let somebody's words or opinions affect you and I think it also is hard with social media you know it's so instant that you get these comments and whether it's body image or um something that you're doing in the gym or you know for actors or musicians saying that they don't like their new album or their new film or whatever everybody's obviously entitled to their opinion but it's the way that you kind of um react to it in in your own sense and kind of you have to you know stay true to yourself and so I think that's important do you think social media has changed the Olympic Games I mean oh my gosh yes when you (laughs) we were I was just talking about that this morning um it was uh, in 2008. I didn't even have a Twitter or say, an Instagram. I had like had that. a Facebook that was just my private Facebook yeah. and um, not like a fan page or anything. Mm-hmm. And I think it definitely has changed. I mean, you look at the 2012 Olympic Games and these five girls that competed, um, you know, their numbers just went from like having like 5,000 followers to close to half a million to a million followers yeah. in just the matter of a week. Mm-hmm. And so it's just, uh, it's it's crazy insane how much social media has um really affected the Olympics but also um that like in that way it's it's amazing it's incredible you can get to know these athletes that Mm -hmm. you really don't know too much about by looking at their Instagram photos or seeing what they're up to on Twitter or um but at the same time I also um kind of want to go back to the day where you couldn't log on to Twitter and find the results you know because it's like there's something about watching an event live that you know you watch it and you're like what's gonna happen what's gonna Mm -hmm. happen and especially if there's a tape delay or um you know, it's like something about like recording it and coming home and watching it that yeah. night to see. Um, but I guess, yeah, it'll never really be that way. Um, and, and everybody is all of a sudden, um, you know, can can be part of the media because mm-hmm. they can just be at the arena comment. and tweet. Yeah. I think it would be a little bit tough in the sense that, because, like you said, people feel, I mean, they, they're entitled to it, but they're yeah. entitled to throw their opinions out about things that might not even be relevant Mm -hmm. to what you're doing, like your looks or weight or things like that. I would think that would be tough with social media. It is, yeah. Mm -hmm. It's really tough, and especially, I think, for gymnasts. And again, you know, I'm not trying to be biased, but it's like, you know, we grow up in um, in front of thousands of people on TV and and, in a leotard all the time, and then, you know, you hit that age where you go through puberty, and Mm -hmm. all of a sudden, you don't look the same as you did when you were 15 or 16 years old, which is completely normal, and everybody goes through that, but not everybody goes through that in front of millions of people on TV in a leotard. Mm -hmm. And so (laughs) it's, um, yeah, it's like, you know, if, if you were like in the swimsuit on the beach like throughout all those years and it's it's it can be uncomfortable but I think that's why it's important to have self-confidence and um you know as long as you um feel confident um in yourself and Mm. you know you're doing everything to have like a healthy lifestyle and you're working out and you're eating well and um yeah but it's it's hard you know with social media I mean that's the thing it's it's amazing to be able to connect with fans and I love it and I love um you know reading tweets and um seeing like the little page like the the Instagram pages or like the pictures that they kind of make the collages or whatever but yeah. at the same time it's so easy to see one negative comment among there could be a hundred positive yeah. things and one negative thing and it can just ruin your day and yeah. that's what's important is to learn how not to let it affect you that much mm-hmm. you know you take everything with a grain of salt and I think for both ways you know it's like even those a hundred positive comments you can't let those affect you either yeah you know it's like you just have to stay neutral and again the people that have been there for you 
before you had a Twitter again yeah. and um, before anything is, is you know, the peop- those are the opinions that matter to me and, um, you know, my parents, my closest friends and um, the people that are, you know, on my team. I think obviously their opinions matter very much to mm-hmm. me, but um, you, you, you do have to think about the social media aspect and yeah. really not not get too, like, don't dive too deep. <laughs> yeah, don't, don't let it affect you too much. Yeah. Well, Nastia, I think that's all the time that we have. But thank yeah. you so much for being yeah, here. I really having enjoyed me. having you. <laughs> and where can everybody find you? Speaking of social media. Speaking of, <laughs> let me just throw myself yeah. out there. Um, Speaking of which, <laughs> my Twitter and Instagram, um, they're both Nastia Lukin. So it's N A S T I A L I U K I N. All right. Well, thanks, Nastia. Thank you. Thanks for having me. And thank you guys for tuning in and listening. And I am your host, Erica Vieira. And you can find me on Twitter and Instagram at IAMEGR. Thanks so much. Bye-bye. From executive producers Maria Menounos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other after shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Buzz you later. The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals. Thank you for watching AfterBuzz TV on YouTube. For more of your favorite after shows and interviews, subscribe to our channel here and be sure to share your opinion on the episode in the comment section below here. We'd love to see what you guys are buzzing about. Thanks again. Buzz you later.